In today's video, we're going to be building some solid white oak floating shelves. We're going to put them into a corner. I'm going to build a frame where you make them really rigid and sit inside of the tile walls. And there's going to be no giving those and nice and strong the way we're going to do it. So I'm going to show you how. And if you're wondering why the shop looks so different, there's been a big change here. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll explain everything. All right, let's build the shelves, then head over to the job site and install them. I'm going to get started by ripping a straight line on all the boards. After I rip a straight line on each board, I'll reference it with an arrow so that I can put it at the bottom of the pile and just continue through and cut all the boards. I'm going to be doing a miter fold on these floating shelves to make it look like the wood actually grew together and it's a thicker piece. So I'm tipping the saw to 45 and a half degrees and I'm going to cut a long bevel on this. Now whenever I cut these long bevels I like to clamp down the track so it doesn't move. So here I'm just going to remove the clamps and you can see the nice clean cut that we got with this. This is the best way to do this. And now I'll just square up one end before I put it up against the stop block and make the repetitive cuts. I set up a flag stop and I used my tape measure from here to the edge of the splinter guard and now I know that I'm going to cut it exactly 35 and 3 eighths once I make my cross cut. Once I make the cut I can lift up the rail, move this piece off to the side slide the work piece down back into the flag stop and cut another piece exactly the same to 35 and 3 eighths because we need repetitive cuts we have to use the stop So once I have everything set, I know I have to do four shelves in total and my stop block is accurate and I got the measurements that I need. I'm just going to go ahead and complete all the rest of the cuts. But just to give you a quick idea, what I did right here was my table saw right now, I have all the barn door wood, the alder, is sitting there underneath the table saw. I have a column there in the way and I have some more of the shelves, the 8 foot white oak boards. So basically the table saw, I would have to move everything out just to make this quick rip. But with the MFT extension table, or you could do it on the MFT itself, but since I have the extension table, what I did was I clamped a... Uh, basically this is like a support right here on the front the clamps go into the tracks over here and this little support gave me um, a way for the board not to tip over so that I can use my other clamps to clamp the track down to the table I basically hold it in place so that I can make that 45 rip on a 3 inch wide piece. So these are going to be the fronts of those floating shelves. So I have one side cut, cross cut at a 45. That's going to be the side that's exposed. And then the other side is cut straight as a straight cross cut, which is going to go against the wall. So this will be part of the front of the shelf that wraps around. Since I'm going to be doing the miter fold technique and these shelves aren't really that long, they're just under three feet, I'm going to use blue painter's tape and that's going to work just fine. I'll lay the shelves out with the joints facing up so I can apply the glue and then just fold it up and use the tape to secure it. I always use Type Bond 3 for this because it gives you a longer open time and you don't have to worry about the glue setting in place while you're trying to do the glue up.
I'm throwing in a couple of 23 gauge pin nails and that's just to keep the alignment. I'm just going to give it a quick sanding. I'm going through the grits here. I started with 80, uh, working my way to 120, and then 150, and finally 220. Next, I'm just going to use a trim router and hit the edge with a chamfer bit and just ease it a little bit. This will give a little design element and soften up the edge real nice. So now I'm getting ready to glue up the frame that are going to go inside of the floating shelves. They'll be attached to the studs in the wall and sit inside those cutouts in the tile that you've seen before in the other videos. We're going to be using the domino here and I have an attachment and what this attachment does is it allows me to get repetitive mortises on these pieces here. You just set these so that you're centered on your plate and centered in the piece that you're working with and then you plunge into all these pieces it's going to be centered exactly the same on each one and that's what we need we need the repetitive mortises on there and then we could use that on the tight setting and the loose setting on the other side so that we can line it up when we do the glue up we're going to be using a 10 by 50 domino and when we glue it up that's going to be the strongest joint that you can make is a mortise and tenon. So that's not going to have any give in it whatsoever and that's going to make the shelves really strong when they're attached. Uh, if you see a change of scenery behind me, uh, there's been a big rearrangement and change to the shop. Something's missing that is gigantic and it was one of my favorite tools but it's no longer in use here and I couldn't work with it anymore so I had to get rid of it. That is a whole nother video, so stick around for that. Uh, probably gonna make that the very next video. We're gonna just do a shop tour and I'll tell you everything about why I rearranged and why I'm working the way I'm working right now. All right, so let's get started with the mortise and tenon. I got my 10 by 50 dominoes. I'm just gonna do a quick dry fit. You always got a dry fit before you do a glue up. This way you don't run into any trouble. You want to run into the trouble now while there's no glue to tie you up. Because if something gets hung up in there and the glue starts to set, well, you're in pretty big trouble. That's why in a situation like this too, when you get a glue up like this, you could also use Type Bond 3, which is water resistant. It gives you a little more open time. So now I made these mortises here wider so that when I put the end pieces on, I can actually set them where I need to set them. They'll have some movement. That's gonna be one heck of a strong frame. Okay, now for the glue up. So I'm just gonna put some glue on here, butter the dominoes, put them in there, have a little spray bottle with a rig for some water cleanup. Now, most people will think that putting glue here on the end, and when you glue it together, that's gonna to help. This is end grain, it's like a pack of straws together. You put glue on here, it's just gonna suck right down into it. The same way if you had straws in a rubber band, you put glue in there, it's just gonna go right to the bottom. End grain does not take the glue. It will just suck it up and there'll be no strength at all. So your uh, glue up, the strength is gonna come from face grain to long grain. So long grain to long grain, that's what the mortise and tenon gives you and that's why it's the strongest joint. So easiest way to do this and I'm gonna try to glue two of them up 
in the clamps at the same time. Once I do these two, I'll do the other two. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue there. And I'll start with the one right in front of me. And I'm just gonna butter up the domino here. And listen, hey, it's gonna be messy, but Whoops, so I'm not clean. So. And now for the finish, I'm going to spray three coats of a waterborne poly. I'm applying PL construction adhesive to the inside of the shelf because if you try to put it on the frame, when you slide the shelf in, it'll just cake up and go all over the back of the shelf and the wall. Jack, you can have to hand me the nail gun. I told him one more day, one more day. Okay guys, so that was great, a lot of fun. Um, I do want to say one thing though, that you do not have to use solid white oak to build shelves like that. It's what the client wanted, so you gotta give them what they want. But if you were trying to save a little money and you wanted to make floating shelves like that, you could use plywood and just do the same miter fold technique and the, it will appear to be solid wood because the corners will be joined and look like a piece that grew together or one thick you know, piece of uh, lumber. But um, I had also a problem finding white oak plywood uh, to begin with. So they wanted white oak to match their floors and their stairs. So there was really no option to use red oak because it was it had too much of an orangey color in it. And when you put a finish on red oak, it gets a little a little more uh, reddish tone and, and brownish tone than more than they wanted. So we went with the white oak, um, the clear poly. Uh, over it, which was waterborne general finishes. That's always a good finish. Uh, that was the high performance. And we installed the shelves and everything came out great. Um, the reason for the change in the shop, uh, here's a quick picture of what prompted me to do this. I just couldn't take it anymore. I, I'm in a limited space. So check out this photo right here. Okay, so basically you can see that I wasn't even able to get to the table saw to make any cuts for basically the whole duration of this job. I'm still not finished there, so uh, having a lot to do, I don't wanna keep having to move things out of the way just to, just to use the table saw when I've done everything so far with the MFTs and the track saw, and uh, you can see behind me the, the miter saw. 
Um, that is a whole nother story. And let me just tell you, I sold a lot of my old stuff, not because it wasn't good, but because all this stuff works together. It just makes my life easier. So uh, we're gonna eventually get to a shop tour when I really set it up the way I want. I'm definitely gonna get rid of that platform in the background. That's gonna give me some more room so that I can put the dust collector in there. So. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and stick around so you don't miss any of this. It's, it's gonna be a whirlwind of things going on and a lot of videos to come. We still have the barn doors, uh, that's up next. I'm gonna throw some videos in there with certain things. Uh, I started using different tape measures now uh, because I'm mixing in uh, metric and imperial and that's you know something that I'm just gonna share with you guys and, and tell you why I like these specific tape measures that uh, I started using and that's it, I got a lot to, uh, we got a lot to do. So stick around, hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that picture of the notification bell. That's gonna notify you every time I upload a new video. So this way you don't miss out on anything. Um, I hope everybody got a chance to check out the uh, barn beam video. That's all, that's up on the channel. And um, they finally took the masking off of the mantle. So I have a bunch of pictures of that. That uh, went up on my Instagram. The floating shelf pictures will go up on the Instagram. Also, if you don't have um, Instagram, uh, Facebook, you can go on and you type in Scalaro Woodworks, and that is my uh, my Facebook page for the carpentry stuff. All right, guys, so uh, thanks for joining me in the shop and out in the field, and I will see you next time.